Now, back to Detroit. Now, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. These are perhaps some of the most challenging times we've experienced in the past 40 years. Poverty is getting worse in Detroit. A third of our residents and nearly half of Detroit's children live below the national poverty line. And that puts us dead last among big American cities. Put simply, Detroit and Southeast Michigan are in the midst of significant and sometimes jarring change. That change brought about by a horrible economy, remember our whole manufacturing sector based on the automobile industry has forever changed. And frankly, some leaders in metropolitan Detroit who were more interested in themselves than the people they served or the school systems and the companies they ran. This situation has caused Detroit's philanthropic community to be more strategic, collaborative, and entrepreneurial. Now is not the time for us to be a traditional funder. We have had to step into a role that has been unforeseen. We also have to be prepared to capitalize on new opportunities. We have a new president in Washington, new education secretary, Arne Duncan, who along with President Obama shares our long-held belief that failing schools are not only a threat to our economy, but to our system of democracy. And we can't do business as usual in the education sector. Failing schools is an adult issue, and we have to start behaving like adults and fixing our schools so that children don't suffer the consequences of the status quo. This new administration has the potential to be a great partner, and philanthropic leadership is critical in that relationship. In Detroit, we also have a new mayor, the third one this year, Dave Bing, and a new no-nonsense leader of Detroit Public Schools, Robert Bob. And they are putting the interest of children above all else. We are also hoping for new reform-minded members of our city council who will take office in a few short months. But there are also encouraging signs that ordinary citizens are coming together, finding out there is power in their collective voice, and are demanding changes in our schools and in our local government. The Skillman Foundation, like many of you, has had to make adjustments to meet the challenges in our economic environment and the growing needs of children. So we've trimmed our operating budgets, our grants budgets, and we are focusing on things that have the best chance to bring about positive results for kids. We are collaborating with our friends in the philanthropic and nonprofit sector with renewed vigor. And we all come together because we know that we must during this time. We are moving from traditional grant making to being what we call change making. Let me give you a couple of examples. First, our schools work. Detroit has some of the worst high school graduation weights in the country. We're not alone, there are other districts, rural and urban throughout Michigan, that are also struggling with this. So with our Good Schools program, we have stopped giving money to the public school system. We've redirected our grants directly to successful and innovative schools throughout the city. Our message to schools is simple. Show results that you're educating kids and we will support you. That school is, could be a part of Detroit Public Schools, a charter school, a private school, or a parochial school. And while there's much more to be done, the good news is that the number of Detroit elementary and middle schools that are doing right by kids is growing. We've also, in collaboration with other funders, began a project called the High School Accelerator. The goal of that project is to attract dollars to fund innovative new high schools throughout metropolitan Detroit that are based on what we know works for kids, small, rigor, friendship, less anonymity, and counsel, and preparing kids for the 21st century skills. 
We believe the accelerator has tremendous potential to improve the education landscape throughout our region, and it will cause those failing high schools to either change or close. Collaboration is an essential element of our change maker role. So we're using our institutional clout and reputation built up over the last 49 years to attract new resources and build new thinking in Detroit. Our mission is to build a vibrant and sustainable movement on behalf of Detroit's children. In our Good Neighborhoods work, which is a 10-year, $100 million commitment to six neighborhoods where lots of children live and where poverty is a major issue. We are working with natural leaders, people who have been on the ground doing this work for a long time. We are hoping that through our partnership with them that we can transform these communities. Our program staff is embedded in these communities. And we've also brought in leaders from the National Community Development Institute, many of you know them and know their work nationally, to help us organize on the ground and give residents a true voice. Working in this way is new, responsive, and nimble. We're moving so quickly, it's hard for me to keep up some time with my staff. One of the GCYF board members is our Vice President of Programs, Tanya Allen. Fasaha was asking me where was she. I had to stop and pause for a minute, but she's in DC today at the White House meeting with living cities and trying to advocate for the children of Detroit. We've also brought on a couple of really smart public policy fellows from the University of Michigan Ford School of Public Policy. We have a really powerful and interactive website and we've plunged into the social media world earlier this summer. We have a YouTube page, a Facebook fan page, and we tweet. I, I don't tweet yet, but, <laughs> but somebody, a lot of our staff tweet, Bill does it. But we do all of this because I'm determined that we will do whatever it takes to build a movement for Detroit children. If you want to be a part of that movement, I encourage you to go to skillman.org. I want to pause here for just a few minutes and show you a really powerful little film made by an Emmy-winning Knight Wallace Fellow at the University of Michigan. It's four minutes long, but significant because it showcases our good neighborhoods and good schools work. And I thought it appropriate to do so today, given Fred Rogers' mastery of the medium. So can we roll that now? <laughs> 